Samsung Family Hub Refrigerator and the diagnosis on this is like built into the tablet so we're going to talk about how to get into it how to use it why should we use some of these features what would we use them for and if you guys have any questions don't hesitate to speak up and say hey can you tell me what this is or, or how that goes now and one of the things you need to do is learn how to access the fridge manager the fridge manager is basically where the customer can do temperature control settings and see different things about the, uh, the refrigerator make make the ice maker turn on and off um, control freezer temperature the flex zone which is the zone in the middle you can make it more like a freezer or more like a fridge and we'll talk about that if you have any questions about flex zone and what that is for so the fridge manager is broken up into different sections and if you look in the picture in the upper left hand corner we have number one which is the main uh, section which shows you the temperature of the main compartments as well as what setting the flex zone is set for um, then you have uh, two and three at the bottom which is special features and fridge settings and they're all written here around the unit uh, special features view sh short explanation of some of the refrigerators features fridge settings they can change from Fahrenheit to Celsius which is what we saw the, the, the gentleman doing in the last video external conditions if you want to know the temperature and the humidity outside there you go you got to find out what it is test a fridge function test and some other components here and we'll go through these tests and how to use them so by accessing them you're just going to tap a b a b a b and just keep tapping back and forth and the word engineering mode should pop up on your screen right here letting you know you successfully entered this mode and the home screen you slide to the left until you see the uh, fridge uh, manager which would be right here so once you see the fridge manager go ahead and tap on that button now where you want to tap that a B that we were showing you in the last screen is this white area the black area there is still some LCD screen here but you want to be right in this white area and you want to tap back and forth on the top two corners so as you see I'm ready to tap on a and then I'll go ahead and I'll do it and after six successful taps right here on the screen you're gonna see the word energy mode appear okay so now I entered energy mode enter engineer mode and you have several tests that are available to you fridge function test panel function test system information static IP setting right here so again within three seconds when you first enter into the diagnostic mode here you want to tap A to B A to B engineer mode will be displayed and then you'll get to the fridge function test and again this picture wasn't that clear that I took out of the book but this is where I was tapping right across from where it says fridge manager um, okay so engineer mode once you click on engineer mode on the bottom of the screen right here and I just like cropped it you're gonna have those system info uh, load status self-diagnostic error history force run and energy mode uh, these are the buttons here once you press self-diagnosis you, you the unit will run for one minute and it has a counter in the upper right hand corner of the screen will be up here to the right and it'll count down and the, the actual display is going to start to do self tests on all of the components um, so here we got a video I entered en at engineer mode and right now I click self diagnosis and it starts to count down here now I didn't run it for the full minute to bore you to death um, the C will appear up just as it, it's going through a test mode. The C doesn't really mean anything. Now, I'm going to get into what this is here, but if there's any errors right here are going to be where the errors will show. It'll tell you thermistor error, uh, fan motor error, compressor error, or any component. So here's a close-up of that. So as I tap on it, you can see freezer sensor error, 
uh, fridge sensor error, freezer defrost, fridge defrost. So if any of these errors appear in the upper half of the screen and I have fridge sensor error uh, marked, it says the voltage on the main control board, connector 30, pin 5, connector 30, pin 6, should be between 4.5 and 1 volt. So if we go over here to the board, that's connector 30, 5 and 6. Here we have the board. Now we're looking for connector 30. Connector 30 is here on the left-hand side. And the pin locations are here. You have to look on the board to determine which one is pin 1. And let's just say it's this is pin 1. I do, I do not know. Uh, I don't have a close-up of this board. But you go one, two, three, four, five, and you take that fifth and that sixth pin on that plug, and you can measure voltage coming off of that board. So let's go back and look at this for a second. This says fridge sensor error, and you're checking voltage at that point. What what would we be looking for for checking voltage on those pins? But when you turn on forced run or one of these other buttons, the whole time you're in that test, the refrigerator will beep every half a second to remind you that you're in that test. You have to press test cancel to turn it off or it will time out. I don't remember how long it will take, but it will time out, but it'll stay doing that for a while. So here you can hear the chirp. from Amazon and they seem to work out pretty good and they were inexpensive here it's like 17 bucks uh, some of them like this one right here I'll zoom in to get you a better picture look at the small leads that get screwed on the end of these meters here so you could get into those tiny connectors on the board so this has different size meter leads normally you'll have these here that are located in the center and then you got smaller leads that will fit into those small connectors on the board. Um, that's about 23 bucks, and it comes with all of these connectors. Um, so it's a good investment to have. Uh, let me see uh, to help you diagnose the components. Uh, one, you can just open it up and see if the fan runs. <laughs> um, here is. FFR, FFF, FFC, I showed this in the last meeting, and it, it controls the fresh food, and it tells you that the F is the freezer, the C was the condenser fan, and the R was the, I'm sorry, I think the C was the flex zone, and the R was the cooling. I'm not sure if the C was the condenser or the flex zone. I have to double check. Um, but this is so you can run these particular components and and be in that specific diagnostic cycle so one thing that I did not have a video for I didn't have time to get it together let me see if this went to the end of the video so when we went through the diagnostics and we tested the unit through the self check I think it was the video before this you see right here where it says clear error I'm going to rewind it just a little bit so you can see it Let me just let it get to that point. Okay, so I went back into the self-diagnostics, and in the upper half, when I showed the video earlier, where I was going through the self-diagnostic, in the bottom half, if there were any errors, it's going to show you this error list. If anything came up with a fault code, you would go ahead and, and look and see if there's a fault code that appeared in here to help you say, oh, this sensor is giving me this error. I tell a lot of people, use your phone or make note of what errors you see. And before you start testing components, take a picture with your phone, write it down, clear this error, and go back into the self-diagnostics and let it run for a minute and retest itself and see if that error comes back again. Sometimes you may see errors in this list. Customer may have had a technician come out a year ago and change that sensor and that 
error. He didn't clear it from the list after he repaired it. So you're seeing a bad sensor in the error list that may have been repaired or, or, or corrected already. And you're, you're troubleshooting something that doesn't need to be troubleshot. And I'll show you guys. I think it runs up here in the top. Let me zoom out just a little more to find it for you here. Uh, right here. You see this XYZ that's out in the middle of nowhere? The three wires? Those are the three that are coming off the family hub and they connect into the main board here on this connector 50. Pins 1, 2, and 4. So that's how the hub communicates with the main board and tells the main board what to do. Um, I don't know what test you can make. I know it's ground. Uh, probably going to be 12 volts, but I don't know, like even if you had voltage, what that would mean. There's nothing there that tells you how to actually test that component. Um, so you would just go here and, and check these pins, but what, what it is, what it is. So that XYZ right here is this XYZ right here going into the main board on that connector 50. Um, here's TUVW. Where do you think those are going? Without me showing you, where, what do you think TUVW would go? If you were just guessing. The hint is right here. What are these right here? No. Oh, okay, there. No, no, uh, no, not that they're going here, but what does it say right here between the plug and this TUV? What's it say right there? I'm mousing up and down on it. The ground? And the voltage? It's the ground and the voltage. So would these probably go back to the power supply board? So I would probably say yes because it's got to get power from somewhere. Yeah, so here's the filter. I think that little board I told you guys I've never seen before, I think that's the PCB fuse box with the two fuses on it. And that looks like it has to do something with the, with the defrost heater but I'm trying to find that X uh, what, what are the letters again T U V W actually they're right here they're connected to this this board right here T U V W I don't know why they didn't draw them together but T to T U to U so this connector goes to this connector here and this board here is what's supplying power to that board to the family hub so if the family hub didn't work you would check voltage here. If you had the voltage, the board's bad. 